What's up everybody, this is DJ Burrito Boy with a simple tutorial of how to make three basic pad sounds in Ableton. Here's what we'll be making today. Now this isn't going to be an incredibly advanced sound design tutorial, but it will teach you how to make some very useful sounds that will be helpful in your productions. Also, I apologize, I wasn't able to capture audio while I was actually making this step by step. Um, I'm doing voiceover right now, hopefully I'll get those audio issues set up. So right now I am instantiating a new instance of Serum and inputting the MIDI clip. It is just a minor 7th chord and then another minor 7th chord of 4th up. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to uh, switch it to the analog sine waves and bring the unison up to 7. Tighten down that detune. Then I'm going to give it some attack. A slow attack is good for pad sounds. Um, and a little bit of uh, decay. I'm going to bring some release up too just to prevent clicks. Then I'm going to engage a high pass filter. Bring the cut up off uh, up cut off up because I'm not really using it for the filter itself. I'm using it for the drive. I think that it sounds a little bit better than the tube distortion in my opinion. Then I'm going to turn on some chorus and leave it at a pretty light setting, at about 50%, maybe a little bit higher than that. I experiment with the octave. Uh, what octave you use will depend on what octave you input the MIDI clip in as. And then I just the important thing is to make sure that uh, I'm going to use oscillator B with also analog sine waves um, and have it be one octave up, turning the level down a bit. Now what I'm doing is turning on an LFO um, turning off the BPM sync so that it's free and then having it modulate the fine tune that gives it a bit of, a bit of pitch wobble makes it sound a lot more analog and doing it for the uh, oscillator A and B it's okay if you don't have the same amount of pitch bend it's actually kind of nice it gives them a little bit of differentiation from one another then I'm using a noise oscillator and I'm applying that kind of wobble to the volume of the noise oscillator you can shift option click to make the uh, sliders go both directions. Experiment with the level that you want that to be. Then what I'm doing here is using the second LFO to modulate the rate of LFO1. What that does is it's going to make the actual speed of the kind of tremolo wobbles um, change over time. You have to go and do that in the matrix. You set oscillator 2 or LFO2 to affect LFO1's rate and you can mess with, you can see it in the LFO window. Uh, I tend to not do it too much. You don't want it to be crazy noticeable. You just want it to give some background movement to the sound, make it sound dynamic and real. And you can see it change in the matrix as well as the LFO window. Make sure to route both of the oscillators through the filter. That way they both get the same amount of drive and cutoff. And you can play with the cutoff filter if you like. These are the sorts of things that nobody should really tell you how to do. You should do it to your own taste so that it fits well with your own song. Then what I like to do here is give it a kind of a redux uh, bit reduction effect. I like to turn the down sampling to soft. I don't want it too much. The bit reduction is more of um, what I want to hear. And I go pretty subtle with this. If you go too hard, it adds a really kind of gnarly distorted quality, which is not what I'm going for here. And I like to bring in an EQ8 here to roll off some high end because I notice that the, the harsher you use the bit reduction, the more high end you get introduced above 10k. It doesn't really add anything pleasant to the, song, to the sound. It makes it sound really screechy and annoying, um, and that's not what you're going for. At least that's not what I'm going for. So a gentle roll off, and it's always a good idea to roll down some low end as well, depending on your track, right? I wouldn't roll down low end for no reason, but what I'm doing here is rolling it down so that the kick area, the below 100 hertz, stays relatively free, relatively clean. And that is the sine wave sound. <music> Next up is our deep saw wave pad. I've got a new instance of Serum up, and I am using the default saw wave, just bringing it up to seven voices, and doing the same thing as before, having another oscillator also with seven voices, an octave above. First and most important step is getting a low pass filter on there. I like to go to a, uh, an 18 or even 24 decibel low pass filter, and bring the cutoff down pretty low. We want it to sound pretty deep, pretty rumbly. 
the character of this sound uh, comes from moving the cutoff of this low-pass filter over time. Uh, the drive uh, is also very crucial to making the sound loud enough after you've gutted all of the high frequencies. It's always a good idea to experiment with what octave sounds the best for the particular track that you use. Now we're going to use a similar envelope as before, long attack, a bit of release, and a bit of sustain. I don't really go with any effects except for another uh, medium chorus here. Like I said, the saw waves are such a rich and full wave that it really doesn't need that much. Um, this is always going to be a layer in your track. It's not often going to be kind of the star piece of a song, but it gives a lot of depth. You know, what you're going to want to do is automate the cutoff of this uh, low pass filter, or what I like to do is make sure that these automation arms are set and then record some automations myself. So I'm going to speed this up for you, but what I'm doing here is just, you know, recording in the automation that I want to play. And you can assign this to a, a MIDI controller and record it with a knob, and that, that can be really fun. It lets you get creative with it. That is essentially the sound. You might have to bring the volume up a little bit, but that's about it. You can always experiment with adding some more effects on as well. This last pad is going to be a bit weirder and I would tend to use it as kind of an added flavor or kind of bell and whistle of a track rather than the foundation. Um, we're going to turn an arpeggiator into a pad. So I'm going to start with a, a sine wave layered with a brighter wave like a saw or triangle above it. I'm going with a saw here. Um, giving it a bit of a high roll off and making sure the saw is at least an octave or two above the triangle wave. I'm not going to mess with the envelope here because I'm going to be using an arpeggiator and that will change things significantly. So you can just use Ableton's arpeggiator here. Um, I am using a pretty fast rate, making the steps go up to one or two and you can play around with the different um, algorithms or patterns, whether you want it to go up or down, converge. It's going to sound very basic at this point. The rates will be how fast the different plucks of the, arpeggi the arpeggiation happens. The steps will tell you how many octaves, how high or low your arpeggiator will go. And that's the sort of thing you want to play around with here depending on um, what part of the frequency spectrum you're supposed to fill up. Are you trying to add in some lows? Are you trying to uh, add some sparkly highs? It's really up to you. Then I'm going in and adding a free reverb plugin called Valhalla Supermassive. I highly recommend checking it out. I'm using this swelling synth verb preset. Um, the important thing is to have the mix at 100%, which is not something you'd normally do with reverb. And I'm going with an, uh, an eighth note delay here because I figure it'll be easy to work with. The point of this is to smear the sound and uh, make it sound more like an ethereal pad rather than a plucky arpeggiator. This is really just going to be something you're going to have to experiment with yourself. You can experiment with drive, filter cutoffs, you can go crazy with automation. Anytime you can add automation into a sound, um, that's going to make it feel a lot more real, give a lot more interest for the listener. It's more work on the producer's end, but that's what makes our songs interesting. I like to make sure that the reverb has a low cutoff above 100, and then when I'm ready for it to kind of be uh, you know, a sound of its own, um, you see here in this video I'm adding some saturation. You can also do that um, later on in the process. What I'm going to do is um, resample it into a new audio track. So you want to go to the audio track, you want to arm the recording arm, you want to make sure that resampling is selected, and then go ahead and record. And after you've soloed the arpeggiator uh, pad, it'll become audio, which is substantially easier to work with in a couple ways. Now, the reverb is going to um, delay the uh, kind of sound. So what you're going to want to do is I have a MIDI uh, chord progression being played where I can pretty easily tell when the new chord starts to play. And so I just want to go back and align that with the other MIDI so that your chords played in this kind of reverby, um, you know, pad are not lagging behind the rest of the melodic elements and harmonic elements of the song. So I'm just kind of cutting the, um, cutting it up so that it starts at the new chord and then bringing it back to reveal kind of the the rest. And this is going to take some trial and error. I'm not giving you specific instructions on how to do it because it will completely depend on what your settings is inside the Valhalla Supermassive plugin. 
When I first started to use Serum, I was really kind of laser focused on trying to engineer a sound specifically within that. And it didn't really dawn on me for an, kind of an embarrassingly long time that you can use outboard effects to really bring life to your sound. And so this is just kind of something I want to orient you toward. Whenever you resample stuff, it's kind of always good to relevel it. And then with all of the pads, not just this one, you want to add a sidechain compressor that gives you that classic pumping house sound. You've probably watched 30 videos explaining sidechain compression at this point, so I won't bore you with the details of it. That's about it. I will uh, play the rest of these, uh, all three of these pads one more time. Before I end this video, I just want to say if you want to support me, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Most of my views actually come from people who are not subscribed. There will be many more helpful tips to come, as well as original music of my own and DJ mixes. Thanks for listening, y'all. Happy producing.